software compatibility can make or break collaboration among AEC firms. And too often, the platforms that different firms use can be time consuming to reconcile. NVIDIA, a leading designer of graphics processing units for gaming and professional markets, has come up with a solution it calls Omniverse, the first RTX-based 3D simulation platform that, and I'm quoting here, fuses the physical and virtual worlds to simulate reality in real time. In other words, it lets AEC firms using multiple BIM software like Revit and Rhino work together within one platform. This could turn out to be a genuine breakthrough for construction modeling. Joining us today to discuss Omniverse is, are Richard Curris, NVIDIA's general manager of media and entertainment, whose background includes stints with Apple and Amazon AWS, and Robert Severleone, design technology manager in the New York studio of the design firm Woods Baggett, which is an early adopter of, Omn of Omniverse. Welcome to the weekly, gentlemen. Thank you. Glad to be here. Thank you. Uh, Richard, I want to start with you. Uh, what is Omniverse? What problem does it address? And what makes this platform different? Okay. Uh, well, Omniverse is a platform, first and foremost, and it's a platform for collaboration and simulation. And uh, as you said in, in the uh, beginning there, it is designed to simulate reality and to do it accurately so that whether you're visualizing something or you're training robots or whatever you may be doing in a synthetic world, it does it with accuracy. It's designed to solve the problem that many of our customers have had, and that is uh, in part to collaborate together, whether they're across the room or across the globe and to do so using multiple pieces of software. As you said, there's a, always a challenge because different places use different software. Omniverse is based on the Universal Scene Description or USD, which was originally developed by Pixar. What that is, is you can think of it as a, a blueprint for how communication happens between 3D scenes and elements of th that are part of that scene. Once it has that as a common foundation, then we can add to it the NVIDIA types of technology that we have, like real-time ray tracing with photorealistic rendering. And we can apply multiple GPUs to that so we can do it in real time. Um, other things that we can do is control what is being transferred between the locations so that it uses the most uh, maximum efficiency by minimizing how much data has to be transferred that allows everything to be collaborative in real time. So we believe this platform is gonna have a huge implications across multiple verticals. We built it initially for us to use internally because we have a lot of the different areas that, that we address, whether it's robotics, uh, autonomous driving, media and entertainment, et cetera. And so we kind of built this for our needs and then we started bringing it out to our software developers and key lighthouse accounts like Woods Baggett and got their feedback on how this platform could work for them. And together we've been developing this over the last number of years. You, you I, I, my understanding is that over 40 companies were involved in the initial development of this. Am I correct about that? Yeah, over 40, what we call lighthouse accounts, which are uh, key accounts that we work with on a one-to-one -one basis. Uh, their feedback is incredibly important for us to ensure that we're building the right things for them as well as our own needs. And we've had over 400 independent uh, people using the platform in a, in a pre-beta as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Robert, let me ask you, how did Wood Baggett get involved in the development of this platform? So I learned about Omniverse through, um, you know, typical channels. I was hearing some chatter about, you know, um, what's a uh, stealth beta happening. Um, they put out some initial marketing and um, I had reached out to the NVIDIA team at last year's um, Autodesk University when it was actually in person. Um, it's when I got to see an early demo um, of it, there was, a, there was a small showing and I was immediately enthralled by like, you know, what it did and the problems it was solving. And so that's how, you know, we first uh, found about, found out about it. And then um, uh, I have a little bit of background. I, I obviously have a background in architecture, but I also have a little bit of background in media entertainment. I've been a Maya user for like 20 years. So I understood what USD was. 
Uh, and I think that was a, you know, a little bit different take because you don't meet a lot of architects who understand the background of, you know, the power and what USD really means and, and what it could be. So um, that's sort of what started the, 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 uh, the sort of relationship. I, I think um, one, you know, we had that huge hole to fill of, you know, a tool like this that could do that. And, you know, we kind of had a little bit of the knowledge to be able to sort of engage in the type of conversation I think they were looking for um, when it came to testing it. Robert, tell me a little bit about how Woods Bagot is likely to be using this platform in its initial stages. So I, I think like Richard said, one, one, of the, one of the biggest things is that we use a lot of different software through all stages of our projects and something we've always been struggling with, and I think ADC in general is always struggling with, is there's plenty of things to do collaboration within a singular platform, within Revit, within Rhino. Um, but there hasn't been anything that lets you do this kind of real-time, fully synced up collaboration across like pretty much anything you can think of. Um, you know, right now it's Rhino and Revit. Um, Grasshopper just got introduced into the mix. There's, you know, there's Unreal. There's so many sort of uh, inroads into the Omniverse system that it solves a huge challenge for us in that we don't have to really say, okay, you can use this software now and that software later. Um, we can allow the designers to use what they like when they like um, and allow a way more fluid um, uh, sort of dialogue between that. And so for us, that was an immensely uh, exciting and amazing um, thing that we're really looking forward to sort of seeing how far we can push it. Uh, do you have any projects on tap right now that you're using it on? So we we have um, sort of emerged out of like the initial testing beta and started to think about more global deployment. Um, and so we are using it on, um, you know, competitions and things like that mm -hmm. um, internally. Um, and we are now in the in the phase where you know we feel you know you know confident where it's sitting in the roadmap that we're actually now you know talking how do we now globally deploy this because um, we've been testing it within one or two studios um, and now we're talking about how do we get into you know all thirteen. Mm -hmm. uh, Richard, if we were to have this conversation a year from now, what what would you like to have happened over that 12 month period as far as Omniverse is concerned? What's a, in terms of its beta beta tests, its rollout and so forth? Well, a year from now, maybe we could have this conversation in Omniverse. So, okay, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, we are, we announced the uh, plan for open beta, which will take place later this fall. So we are working towards that. Um, at that point, it'll be readily available for anybody that's using an RTX-based system, and we want to gather mm -hmm. that feedback into the mix as well. Um, our goal is for a year from now to have these companies being able to rely on the platform and be productive on the platform. Um, we're taking all this feedback quite serious. We, like I said, we use it internally. If you've seen any of the past keynotes and things that have been done, all of the graphics and animations and simulations and stuff have all been done using Omniverse. Um, and we've also worked with some of our key accounts to show some of the visualizations of things. So where we hope to be a year from now is a real working platform. I mean, we, we value this, our customers value this, and it's built for not only the customers to actually use it, it's also built for the developers, the ISVs or software vendors to use it as well. It's got a robust set of tools that they can build their own custom apps on it, or a, an end user can actually build and customize it themselves and create what we call experiences with it. So we expect that this marketplace will grow and people will be able to exchange ideas and work together. It's really the, 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 the way of the future is collaboration. And, and I think we've kind of been forced into it into the world circumstances that we're in right now, a little faster than any of us anticipated. But the reality is uh, this is the way of, of the world now. We work collaboratively, remotely, and the better we can provide those tools, the better our customers are gonna be able to be productive with that. Mm. Well, I wish both of you good luck with this. This sounds like really exciting. Uh, and, uh, you know, I hear a lot of people claim breakthrough all the time. And sometimes it's just PR. But this seems like it might be a little bit beyond that. And uh, I, hope, I, I hope I'm right. 
Guys, I thanks. I think you are. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And guys, thanks for talking to me about this. I appreciate your time. Thanks to our viewers for watching. This is John Caulfield from Building Design Construction Ma Magazine. Thanks, John. Thank you. Good to see you, Robert. Bye-bye. Good to see you. Thank you.